What's up? This is Rebel Radio. What up? What up? This is DJ Newmark. This is Tina Better Wolf. It's your boy. It's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh-huh. Rebel Radio is going down. What did you say? Rebel Radio? Oh, wait. Let's do it again. Rebel Radio. What's up, Rebels? Welcome back to Rebel Radio, the weekly show where I bring you the rebels who are shaping our culture. I'm your host, Josh Levine. This week, my guest is Danny G. He's an artist on the rise and rising fast. This dude set a goal for himself to create 10,000 pieces of content in 2022 um, and has been doing that uh, all year. And it's, it's a crazy journey. Sounds like he's learned a lot. He's accomplished a lot. He's grown a lot. Um, and, and I think, you know, I love the conversation because we, we're really talking about as an artist, focusing on what you can control, which is ultimately your creative output. Uh, I think we're, we're also tempted to focus on the things that are outside of our control, like how the world responds and receives what we put out. But this dude has definitely cracked uh, the code a bit for himself. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. I'm, I think it's a fun interview. Let's go. Hey, what's up, man? Doing how well, you doing? How you doing? Doing well. How you doing? Right on. I'm excited to meet you. It looks I'm, I've been learning about you from from your publicist, and it seems like <clears throat> uh, I should have known about you a while ago because it seems like you're <laughs> everywhere now that I'm seeing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Things you're doing are doing some really cool stuff. Totally. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm excited to be on here. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, uh, I'm excited to get into it. Um, so yeah, I always like to start kind of at the the very beginning. I know you got a ton of cool shit happening that I want to talk about, but yeah. um, but start me off with uh, what do you do? You remember the first record you ever bought for yourself? The first record, um, I remember like the first like first songs I heard were the Dave Matthews Band. So okay, Dave Matthews. Yeah, my parents used to play that. Like, what would you say by Dave Matthews was like the song that like got me into all of it. Um, okay. And from there, I was just like, I, I wanted to be Dave Matthews. Like I was in second right? grade, like playing, yeah, playing guitar and singing Dave Matthews songs. So nice. that was like my guy early on. Um, That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, how did you, uh, how did you start making music? Somebody, did somebody kind of push you in that direction, other than Dave, or, uh, or yeah, what, I mean, where did the start come from? I don't know. I think I just, I always loved just being on stage and performing. Um, I think that's like the thing that I really love, just being on stage and, and creating as well, just creating and performing. Nice. And so, um, yeah, my, like my, nobody in my family really does music. I just started writing songs. Like even in elementary school, I would write songs. Um, I remember like the first song I wrote, uh, my parents, like I like got in trouble. It was in like second grade and they sent me outside and it was like super windy <laughs> outside. And I wrote a song called The Wind and that was like my no first song. Yeah, yeah. And from there, I just like kept it going. So, um yeah, it wasn't really a, like a big push. It was just something that was rooted in me. And I love just creating something out of nothing. And so, um, yeah, from there, I just never looked back. And now it's it's obviously music, but it's also just content creation. And sure. it's just rooted out of that love for creating and, and performing. So was there like a moment when, uh, you know, it went, at least in your mind, from from a hobby to a profession? Like, you know, did something something jump off? Uh, or, yeah. or was it, you know, something happened that, that this became like kind of real for you? Yeah. I mean, for me, it was, it was a bit later than a lot of people. I was actually in college. Um, like when I quit, cause I played sports growing up all the way through college. So I played, mm-hmm. I played soccer in college, um, at Belmont university and going into my senior year, I quit soccer. And for me, that was like a big, like, it was just like an identity shift. Cause my whole sure. life I've kind of been like it. I just hang out with like, you know, sports guys, jock type guys and that kind of thing. And, and I always kind of had that to almost lean on where like I was an athlete in college. Um, but then when I quit and it was like, my identity is that I'm, I'm an artist and a creator and stuff like that. That was kind of the shift for me. Um, and it was like, it was scary, but I think it really pushed me. It was exciting. And sure. um, yeah, from there I've really gotten things moving. So I guess that was the moment just kind of releasing that part of me, like that I'm an athlete. I'm still, I still do sports and everything, but um, yeah just like putting that behind me was a moment where I was like, okay, I'm really doing this. What, um, what do you think you learned from all the sports training that you use now in your, in your music career? Or, yeah, or I think a, it's a uh, creator. So totally, yeah. I mean, I think the main thing is I just haven't, I have an athlete's mentality towards, you know, making music and making content. So I understand just like the hustle of it all. And 
I, I really pride myself on just working super hard and putting in the hours and putting the reps in. Um, mm-hmm. And I just think I have that mentality with with music. So it's just like an athlete making music, essentially. Um, sure. And then also with with all the content I do, it's all sports themed. And so right. that that's where like it's cool to be able to draw that parallel where, where it's like, OK, I didn't play pro sports, but it's still coming. It, there's a lot of use for it in sure. my content and stuff, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and so, so after you made that shift, what, what was the, what's the first thing that kind of hit that, that gave you a sense that you had made the right choice? Cause I'm sure that can be a scary moment. Yeah. As you said, sure. kind of letting go of part of your identity and, and shifting to something else. Like what, you know, what yeah. jumped off for you that made you feel like, okay, this is, I can do this. I think, uh, I mean, I made like a big, the first thing was like, I made like a big announcement post basically. Cause even my Instagram at that point, like it was all just like sports and whatever. Um, and I like switched my username, and, like made an announcement post. So basically like it was in 2019 and I was like, Hey guys, I'm going to be putting a lot of music out. Um, mm-hmm. I'm really like starting my brand, starting my artistry. And it was, it was received like super well. It got a lot of positive like reinforcement and engagement. So I think that was what I needed then. Um, and then from there, yeah, my first couple of songs were really well received by a lot of people. Uh, and uh, I mean, even this year, I've had my fr- like my by far my biggest song, my first song that kind of caught on on TikTok and social media. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called mm-hmm. Participate, and it's it's my biggest song yet. And so, just to see that progress, and you know, things continue to go like this, um, yeah, just makes me feel like you know I'm I'm really doing this, and it's the right call. So nice. Yeah. Um, and so so jumping into music as a career, do you have some is like. Was there somebody to help you, you know, navigate? Obviously, the music industry is a—it's a crazy uh, maze yeah. of twists and turns, and uh, you know, lots of pitfalls. Is that totally. are you kind of are you figuring that on a, on your own, or what? What is that? You know, how, um, how do you find people you can trust and rely on? Yeah, totally. I mean, my—I mean, my parents. I'm super close to my parents, so they've always been. Um, they're the biggest ones and they've just obviously experienced so much. And so I go to nice. them with everything, just with navigating through it. Um, I also just have, I don't know, I have a couple of friends that I'm really close with. I'm big on like really um, tight and quality relationships as opposed to mm-hmm. just you know, being friends with other people. Whatever. So I have just, I don't know, a good squad of two or three that have just kind of been with me through it all. Um, nice. And then also I just think like just experience. Like I feel like now as opposed to 2019, I just have so much more of an understanding for I don't know. I just had to gauge people and gauge, you know, industry people. And I really understand what people want. And like, if they're really in it for you, you just learn a lot from experience. And so, sure. um, yeah, I've had my parents and a couple of solid people with me. And then I think just constantly trying things and growing and learning. I've just, um, you know, I've gathered a lot of wisdom over the past two, three years, I guess. Nice. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, that's big, right? You, you got to get out there and try shit and learn, right. make mistakes, whatever. Um, yeah, because you can, you can, yeah, you can talk about stuff, and people can tell you what to do and everything. But that's the best way you're going to learn: just truly sure. doing it and trying and failing and growing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, absolutely. Any any key, uh, not necessarily key failures, but key experiences that that have have sort of shaped the the path that you're on now. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like 2019, 2020, I was a lot more focused on like just my numbers looking good on like Spotify and stuff like that sure. and trying to get big features and paying for features and stuff like that. And uh, what that created for me was just, it was like a cool look, but it's all just temporary. There's no right. depth. There's no real substance to it. Uh, and so what I've focused on this year and, you know, towards the end of 2021 is just truly building up my fan base and my assets and what I have. Uh, and so like now with what I've started to build and my social media stuff that I've built up, I really don't need like those features or any of that stuff. And, right. um, you know, I don't, I don't need to push for these numbers on Spotify because what I have now is actually real and it, it's not just a moment that it looks cool. And so sure. that's like the biggest thing I've learned. It's like, my thing is like, build your, build your, your, just basically build it and they will come like build what you have, build your fan base. And then these features will come organically and these like sure. other opportunities will come organically. Um, as opposed to like doing it the other way and trying to, buy features and look cool. I think just truly build it yourself is kind of what I've learned. I love that. I love that. So, so I understand you have this, uh, 10 K and 22, um, you know, you've taken on this task of creating, I think an insane amount of content, um, for, for all your different socials and all that. So tell me about, uh, how that came together 
and and I love to hear kind of how it's going now. The year's almost over, right? So, yeah, yeah. So for me, I just I kind of understand that just social media is just modern marketing now. Like that's that's the way to market right. yourself. Like that's there's no TV, sure. like there's no th- stuff like that. So I understood that, um, and I'm at a point now where I feel like I I really want to you know, get things going. And I just want to become the artist and creator and, you know, influence that I just have always wanted to be. Um, and so I was like, what's some crazy standard I could hold myself to this year where it's like, even if things don't grow, I could just say I tried and give literally everything I had. And so I set that, I set that 10 K number. It's like 28 pieces of content a day. Um, just with the goal of like, I knew like if I stick with it, something's got to happen. Um, and yeah, like I said, like I just I desperately wanted to create a fan base and a following for myself. And so I thought that was the best way to do it. Um and I mean it's been incredible. Like coming into the year I had I think ten K on Instagram and now that's at eighty and then I had fifty K on TikTok and that's at like nine hundred now. And so wow. it's just grown immensely. And then the Spotify yeah. everything's kinda of grown. And so um yeah, it's just consistency and hard work. And uh it honestly worked out exactly how I was hoping it would work out. So it's uh it's cool. It's exciting. Uh, that's super cool. Um, one of the things I love about that is, is, you know, in the, in the businesses I've run and in my own life and career, you know, I think, um, you always, uh, how can I say it? You always want to focus on what you can control. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I think it's so tempting that we get locked up in all the stuff we can't control the way that people react or respond to, to what we do. Right. Or like, you know, like you're saying, whether whether a label picks you up or radio or, you know, whatever. Right. All that's out of your control. But you can control as an artist what content you make and put out into the world. And so I love that you put such a heavy focus on that. I think that's uh, yeah. I think we get we can all learn from that. Um, Yeah. And I think, too, I think the thing that's been great about it, too, is it's forced me to like through ups and downs of momentum. I've just done the same thing every single day. And I think that's a big thing that happens with artists, too, is like you put out one song and it flops or you put out like three or four videos to promote your song and they don't do well. For me, it's like, I've done this like all year, but like yeah. it's done this just because of the consistency. And so I think that's yeah. like the key part of it. I mean, that's a huge insight too, right? Is it's, it's never, you know, you look back 20 years from now and it'll feel like a kind of straight, you know, line totally. going up, totally. but it's never like that when you're in it, right? It's up and it's, uh-huh. you know, day in, day out, it's, it's up and down. Yeah. I love that. Exactly. Um, yeah. What, so if you were, uh, I don't know what your plan is for next year. I want to talk about that, but, but if you were going to do this, uh, if it was going to be 10 K in 2023, um, what would you do differently than what you did this year? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, I almost think I'm, I would maybe even dial back the quantity a little bit now. I think, Mm -hmm like the hustle is important, but I feel like that's like to get yourself off the ground, you got to do that 10 K sure. and go crazy. Um, but I think once you reach a certain point, like kind of where I'm at on TikTok and stuff, um, I, I just think there's another layer of what I have to offer instead of like just, you know, 20 second little funny videos or 20 second sure. snippets in my song. I feel like yeah. I've kind of gotten to the point now where I can keep doing that, but I, there's more I want to say and more I want to do. And so I think like 2023, I'll probably dial it back numbers wise, mm-hmm. but the things I'm going to be putting out are just going to have more behind them and stuff yeah. like that. But, but I, I think when you're, when you're trying to get everything going, it is important just quantity because you, you don't know what's going to hit. You Absolutely. learn a lot from posting a lot. So yeah. Um, yeah. I think I'm just going to dial back a little bit, still a lot of stuff, but um, just yeah. put a little bit more time in each thing. Cause I think I have that group of, you know, that fan base now that would actually want to see it, but you have to get there first, I guess. So, so I'm sure a lot of people listening, are thinking, you know, 28 pieces of content a day, there's no way I could do that. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, tell me, tell me about how you do that both, both, uh, creatively and, uh, and practically like, you know, what's the team like, like how, how are you able to turn out that much content? Yeah, totally. I mean, so first off there are like five different social media platforms, right? So like right. if you're repurposing sure. your stuff on that's, that's going to be a bunch right there. So that's the mm-hmm. first thing. Um, and then as far as shooting content, I mean, I just have a camera guy and I edit and he helps me edit. So just camera guy and editor basically. Nice. Um, and I just, I think people like look too much into what a piece of content is. Like for me, it's I'll take a song that I have. We'll do a performance video for the full three minutes of the song, 
chop mm-hmm. it up into 20 second bits. And then you have right there, that's nine pieces of content. And so yeah. um, I think, yeah, you can do it in bulk and you can do it in a way that, you know, it's a little 15 second thing or even, even a story like, Hey guys, how's everyone doing today? Um, yeah. Drop what you're excited about in the little question box or whatever, just things like that. Um, mm-hmm. Those can, those can all be pieces of content. So I think just, yeah, understanding that like nothing, it doesn't have to be like a, a minute super edited kind of thing. Um, right. It's just, you know, everything can be content and everything can be repurposed. And so it's 28, which is a lot, but with all the platforms and with, you know, stories sure. and stuff like that, there's yeah. a way to get there. Um, and yeah, I, I just really time block it too. Like I, I shoot two full days. I edit like a full day every week and then I just kind of oh, have nice. the stuff ready um, Smart. as opposed to working as I go. So that's the other thing I guess I'd say, just do it first and then kind of have it ready to roll out throughout the week. So I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. And I, you know, I work with, with a lot of artists and I noticed that, um, you know, I think especially maybe older artists who come from the, the traditional music business of, you know, long, yeah. long recording cycles and promotion release cycles, you know, yeah. they, they have a really hard time thinking, uh, in this sort of creator's mindset, like what you're talking about. Right. And, and the, you know, totally. if they get, if they get three music videos out of an album, you know, that feels like a lot. Right. And it's, it's a huge time and money, you know, investment. And, uh, and I think what you're saying is absolutely, you know, much more in line with the way the world works today and the way these social platforms work and, you know, everything is content, right? Totally. Yeah. And I, and I think that's like, I think a lot of those type of artists, you know, they, they don't want to adapt to it, but I think if you just switch that thinking into it being like, I think it's really exciting because you don't need money. You don't need a sure. label. You don't yeah. need anything. You just, yeah. you know, sing Absolutely. your song in your car. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's like an, a very exciting time for the industry. So, so looking back uh, at the year, in terms of the content you put out and, you know, I've seen a lot of it is, is sports and, and uh, junk yeah. food and like just, you know, yeah, fun yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. obviously the music, um, Yeah. you know, what do you think you've really gotten right? Uh, in, in terms of that content and, and I guess, you know, maybe define that however you want, but, but to me, it's like that you enjoy making and putting into the world and you've gotten good feedback on. Yeah. Um, I think what I've gotten right. Like if you look at that entertainment page that I have, the Danny J entertainment one, mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing there is like, I'm just being a hundred percent myself, like a hundred percent authentic. And so with that, like, I never run out of ideas because I'm just doing what I would do anyways with my friends. Um, And I think that's why like the fan base I built is like truly like really strong. I could really think they would like, and I think that's why it's kind of worked with the music. My music numbers have gone up a lot because they're, they're invested in me just as a person because I'm just being myself. Um, And so I think that's the biggest thing. I think if I were trying to put on an act or trying to maybe replicate some other creator or some other artist or whatever, uh, you can do it, you know, to an extent, but there's just no longevity to it. So I think sure. I'm just really glad that I built something just being myself. And now from there, I can kind of go anywhere with it. Cause it's just, it's just me. I'm not really putting on any facade. Um, and I think that's the same thing with, with music as well. Like the songs where I'm really just doing what I want. Cause I, I fall into the trap sometimes of trying to be like other artists and emulate other artists, but mm-hmm. the songs that I've really kind of leaned into what I know my artistry can be and what I want to be doing. Those are the ones that have done well. So I think that's the biggest thing. Just like being myself, that's the biggest thing that's gone right for me. Yeah. How do you how do you avoid that trap? I think you know that's come up a lot in in these interviews, right? Is is it's impossible not to be influenced by the world around you and the the stuff that yeah. you hear and whatever, right? And and uh, so how do you you know how do you filter that stuff out when right it, it, it stops you from from trying to sound like someone else? Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think, I think you're obviously going to take influence. Everyone takes influence, but I, I, I think it's just a feeling. I think you just have to like keep creating, keep recording, keep making music and like keep making content. And I think the more you do it, the more you find out kind of what your lane is. Cause mm-hmm. like even with the content, like I didn't, I didn't even know what I wanted to do. I just started making things and recording things. And I feel like the more you do that, the more you just kind of figure out what feels right. I think you just feel it. And I think that just comes from, doing it which kind of goes back to the 10k concept of just sure. you kind of learn as you go um and yeah I, I i think just doing it and kind of just listening to your instincts with it 
So have there been things that you put out that either you thought were going to get a bigger reaction or that, or that you thought, or they got a bigger reaction than you thought they were going to? Yeah, totally. All the time. Um, that happens all the time. My content, I'll spend like a bunch of time on, it, may, it might be like a, like a food tournament or something and, and some mm -hmm. will do really well, some won't do well. And then same thing with songs. Like I didn't, I didn't expect that all for participates to be my biggest song this year. It wasn't even on my radar, but um, mm. I just kind of put out like I was, it was just like January, February. I was kind of just leaking all my songs. I had like 10 songs in the rotation that I was just constantly leaking on TikTok. Um, and that was one that just caught. So yeah, with that song, I had no idea. And then the content, same thing. So that's why I try and just kind of put it all out there for, for the market to kind of decide. Nice. And then are you kind of yeah. adjusting on the fly? Like, okay, you know, that song hits. So, so how does that change kind of what you do next? Yeah, totally. That, and that, that could get tough too. It's, it's kind of tough to have like a release cycle when it's based on like how it's going to be received online. Um, right. but I've been trying yeah. to keep it looser with that. Like I'll have songs in demo form and then whichever one kind of gets the engagement, I, I go with that one. And so I've definitely adjusted that. Cause in the past I've, I've tried to set a release cycle where I know every song for the next like six months and mm -hmm. you can do that, but it's just hard when you're sure. basing it on, you know, your TikTok audience or whatever. So. Yeah, I try and adjust on the fly and just keep it pretty, pretty. So you're making demos. Point. Are you are you sharing that? Are you sharing kind of unfinished songs? Yeah, with, so, yeah. with fans, there was like well? seventy five percent there. Yeah, yeah. Like that's how I did it with uh, participate. It was like it wasn't okay. done, but it's close enough where you get what the song is going to be. You know, yeah, that kind of thing. Because also with that, I was just spending a lot of money on getting songs <laughs> done that then might sure. not come out, and that was just that wasn't good financially. So yeah, I've I've kind of learned with that. No, I think that's so smart. I mean, again, if you look back at the history of music, you know, so many artists, you know, they, they spend, you know, years and hundreds of thousands of dollars making these records that uh, turns out the songs weren't what people wanted, right? And they had, right. frankly, no way of knowing that until, until it was all over and, you know. Right. It's tough, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, Thank you, sir. What, so... So tell me about next year. What's, what's, uh, how has the, the goal and the vision kind of taken shape for, for, you know, what the future looks like? Yeah, I think, uh, this year, like I've been saying, was kind of the hustle year to build an audience and build a fan base. And so I feel like I've, I've really started to do that. And so next year, like I said, maybe dialing back a little bit on the number with the content, really planning out some bigger, you know, content things I want to do and content projects. Um, and then just continuing to, to release music and tease music pretty consistently. I think mm -hmm. that's the part of the brand that I could dial in even more because this year was, was very focused on just getting the audience. And so I got that sure. with the content, but, um, yeah, next year it's, it's higher quality content, you know, more focus and, uh, maybe a little, a little bit less quantity than trying to get the music kind of where the, the, um, entertainment fan base is, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I'm excited. I think it'll be, I'm going to be good. I think I'm in definitely the best spot coming into a new year that I've ever been in. So I'm really excited. Nice. How much, you know, other than like counting likes and shares and that kind of stuff, like, but how, how much does audience feedback play into, to those decisions? Especially uh, on the plays, music side, right? Like how, how, how do you, yeah. how do you decide where to kind of let them in or not? plays into a certain extent like i don't ultimately it's the market is what decides you know what does well so like i, I obviously want to listen to that um and so i, I listen to an extent but it, at the end of the day too you got to do what you love and what like you love creating sure. and make the music you want to make and so i think if it's if it's which song should i put out next you know i'm, I'm okay with letting the the market and the fans decide that um mm -hmm. but you know i'm not gonna like change my my sound i'm not gonna like stop putting out certain content because like that kind of thing. So I think it's just, you know, little tweaks and listening to your audience, but um, still finding that balance with staying true to what you want to do and staying true to yourself at the same time. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, is there, is there like, uh, like, are you working towards like a, you know, official sort of album release or is the plan to to just kind of keep releasing uh yeah i i'm gonna i'm doing like for the time being i'm actually just sticking with singles because to me it's like 
I could put out a, a 12 song album in June or whatever, because I, sure. I have the songs and everything. But um, to me, just to, to get the attention on each song, I think singles are, are, are the move and I can promote them separately. And so, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do an official album, but I'll put out, you know, probably a couple of albums worth of, of songs next year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I think the single, the, the single, unless you're, you know, a massive artist, I think, I think singles are the play for like an up and coming artist personally. So I'm yeah. just, I'm just going to do a bunch of singles and, and kind of push them that way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think the, I think what artists need, especially at, at this stage is, is momentum. Right. Oh, totally. And, totally. Uh, yeah. You know, is is frankly starting any, any project, any business, right. You, yep. you need momentum. And I think that's, um, you know, that gets overlooked definitely in music. I think the, the creator, side of things really understands that uh, in a much better way yeah um yeah and i think it's as an artist you almost have to like you almost have to earn that right to be able to put out a project it's like when you're up and coming and you don't have that fan base yet like it's not even it's just what it is like you don't have that fan base that wants to listen to a project and so you can do it but i think you need that momentum first you need to almost need to earn that in a way sure with singles yeah so yeah and are you are you doing live shows? Yeah, so I actually have a tour in December. I'm going to be opening for uh, Sammy Adams, which will be really fun. oh nice. Yeah, oh, so we're cool. doing. Yeah, we're doing. I think it's nine shows. It starts December 9th. and so I'll be doing that. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Sam is awesome, so it should be good. nice. That'll yeah. be cool, and I'm sure it'll take take the content kind of in a new direction. Totally, totally, yeah, and it'll be good to get in front of some some decent sized crowds. I did a. I did a co-headline earlier this year, which was fun, but having a guy like Sammy, I think, I think the crowds would be pretty fun. So it'd be good. Sure. Absolutely. Um, t- tell me about, uh, I know you've had a, a couple kind of corporate partnerships, uh, McDonald's, Dairy Queen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, tell me, how, how did those come together and, and what's, what, what have you sort of learned about, you know, brands in your, in your midst and, and how you want to, how you want that to go going forward. Totally. Yeah. So, I mean, the ones like McDonald's and Dairy Queen, um, those all just came from, they just, they just found my TikTok and kind of reached out to me. And that goes back to the thing I was saying with just like build it and they will come. It's just mm-hmm. build up your following, you know, get your engagement up and, and build a fan base and mm-hmm. those companies will, you know, come into your life. So uh, yeah, that's how those kind of came about. I'm actually, I'm talking to a few companies now with, with actually like signing a full year long, um, type deal where I'm like really sponsored by them and everything like that, which is nice. really exciting. Um, and so that's too, that's kind of what I'm looking for with brands going forward. Um, I think it's, you know, partnerships over like quick paydays with brands. I think that's the way that, sure. you know, brands can get the most out of the content because you, you then actually care about the brand. Um, and then for the creator, when you have those long-term contracts, it, uh, it's just stability with, with money and everything. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for going into the next year. It's just like, longer term deals with brands where, you know, I could really get invested in the brand and then I don't have to, you know, just worry about like random brand that was coming up. I can have like a consistent thing. And sure. so that's been really cool though. I, I really wasn't doing big brand deals until this year. So it's been really exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and, and are you, uh, do you have the sense, you know, I've, I've, I, I've seen it and been involved in a ton of great brand partnerships. I've also seen the ones that kind of go bad and, yeah. You don't, uh, you know, either side or both sides don't really get what they need. Like, yeah. you know, do you feel like you're able to get uh, them to understand your value the way you see it? Right. right? Yeah. You I know, think obviously they're totally. looking at the numbers to some extent. Right. Um, yeah. I think, I think some brand you can tell like pretty quickly, like some brands understand it better than others. Sure. Um I think like the main thing is like if I hit up or a brand hits me up and uh, they have like a script for me to do and it's just like a very adsy video they want me to do like that I don't even do those anymore because yeah. yeah. that's you want an ad to perform well and so if you want it to perform sure. well you want it to be natural and organic and so that's the the first thing like I really like brands that would just be like you know you know your page you do what you do and just you know a light push to the the brand or whatever um, mm-hmm. so that's a big thing and then yeah you can just tell when when brands. Um, are invested in me or, or if it's just like a quick payday and they're just hitting up a bunch of creators. And so it, it just becomes really clear the more you do it. And uh, yeah, I've gotten to the point now where if it's, if it's not a longer term relationship and it's not something where I have the freedom to, 
kind of do what I want to do with the video, then I just don't do it because it's not even worth it for them either. Like a, just an yeah. ad video where it's just an ad, it's just not worth it for anybody. So, um, yeah, yeah, you can, you can totally tell which brands are, are good with that and which just don't get it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a really powerful place to come from to, to be able to say to somebody, look, you know, you're not going to be happy. Not, you know, I'm not going to be happy and you're not going to be happy with the end result of this. So exactly. let's not do it or let's figure out a different way, you know, that we can totally. all win together. And I think, you know, more, you know, artists need to get good at that, right? They need to get good at saying no in a way that, that, uh, that feels, that kind of understands the big picture, right? Totally. Yeah. Opposed to just yeah. saying, I don't yeah, want to do this, right? Right. Yeah. It's, it's a no because it's like, both parties aren't going to benefit. And it's hard to do that too. When there's like money at play, that's like obviously a very hard thing. It's like, okay, I want, I want to get paid for video, but I think yeah. it's just long-term it's better. Cause even for me, I want every brand that works with me to be like, that was, he killed it. And we, sure. it was a great relationship. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's tough, but you just got to look big picture of it. No, I think you're right. And I think, you know, the, the ones that work, like, you know, brands have, you know, they have deep pockets and they have, uh, the, you know, the good ones, they like to work with the same partners year after year. Right. And, you know, yep. I've been involved in partnerships that go on for, you know, a decade or more and, right. and everybody really wins. Right. The, you know, the money starts right. to stack up and, uh, and, uh, the, 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 uh, the, you know, creative juices flow better and better. And so I, I definitely think that's the right way to look at it. You know, not just this one check that's in front of me, but like, how do we build something together that's going to last over time? Exactly. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. That's exactly it. Yeah. I love it. Um, you went, you started with Dave Matthews. Now yeah. you're kind of doing your thing. Um, totally. Do you, are you, you know, are you conscious of kind of evolving your style or, or do you just let it flow? And kind of yeah, come, I, come as it goes. Yeah, I think I, I've definitely, over time, my thing now is I just, I'm trying to kind of incorporate just every part of my artistry. And that's why I've been dropping a lot of songs this past couple months because um, like I rap and I, I do that kind of thing, but I also, mm -hmm. I do sing and I, I play guitar and, and all that. And I, I was in jazz choir in high school. And so um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a way to kind of fuse all of those things. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I pride myself on being like a very diverse artist, but I think there's sure. a sweet spot sound in there that could, uh, I'm still, you know, building towards like just having that staple sound where it's like, oh, this is a, a Danny G track. And so I right. think, you know, the more songs I put out, the more I put out into the world, I'm kind of honing that. And, uh, yeah, my goal with that is, yeah, just kind of, kind of showcase all that I can do. Um, but yeah, still have that like staple sound that people kind of look for when they hear one of my songs. Yeah. And so are you seeing different, you know, when you, when it's a, when it's more of a rap song, are you seeing different audiences that, you know, pay attention to that one versus something else? Or is it more like you're building this sort of core fan base that just likes what you do? And yeah, I think, yeah, I, I definitely see it. it just depends on the song. I think, um, yeah, I, I mean, for whatever reason, my the rappier songs this year have done the best. And so mm -hmm. there's something to, you know, take away from that. Um, sure. But I think there are people that I'll put out like a song like One Way Road where it's it's a little more rock and like pop rock type vibe and, and people love that. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I think I think the real fans kind of just rock with whatever it is I'm releasing. But mm -hmm. I think there's probably little like, you know, sub fan bases within like each kind of genre I lean into. Um, yeah. But I think that's a good thing, too, because I can I can appeal to more people than if I'm, if I'm releasing, you know, both mm -hmm. types of, of songs. So, yeah. Um, oh, so, so tell me about like the different platforms, obviously you're posting everywhere. Yeah. Um, do you, are they, have you learned like, is one platform better for, for one thing? Uh, or do you just kind of treat them all the same and put it, put everything out? Like, uh, how, how are you thinking about the different platforms? I, you know. I, I know TikTok obviously is kind of the one that everyone's talking about right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, I th think there's, there's little things like with Instagram for whatever reason, like higher quality 
videos seem to do a little better than on TikTok. TikTok's a little sure. more genuine. Um, <clears throat> but I, what I've noticed, like ultimately, though, is is like a, a good video that does well on one platform will usually, if if it's a really good piece of content and like really well made and put together, um, it'll it'll do well on like pretty much any platform. That's what I've found at least with like if I have a video do really well on TikTok and I put it on Reels, it will do pretty well. So I mean, there's little logistical things that you could tweak and fix but ultimately for me i'm just focused on making the best videos i can and usually it just it, it kind of transfers like with all the platforms um sure but I, yeah i mean i i do i think i have the most focus on tiktok because i definitely think that platform has by far the most discovery right now with just getting yeah. new fans like, i don't even it's not even close and so that to me is the most that's kind of the the first funnel that i bring everybody in through and then from there it's the other platforms but um, and so yeah to me that, I like a good video is a good video so yeah absolutely yeah. um and, and when you're in in that context are you thinking about kind of monetization uh yeah like you know or 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 is it just building a fan base and and you know that'll come when the time comes yeah i mean i think i think it's i'm more focused on the fan base but obviously like making money is important too so sure that's one of the reasons i, I have tried to really go cross-platform because the way i see it now with like how i built my instagram is like if a, a brand hits me up now i now have that asset as well that can make right. a video for me worth more so i could do it on tiktok and instagram so yeah i'm always thinking about that and you also just never want to be reliant on one platform because anything could happen like tiktok could get banned tomorrow instagram could get banned um yeah, so yeah i definitely have that in the back of my mind thinking like you know, the more like cross platform I am, and just the more followers I gain, the more money that's worth. Um, but also with that, it's like it doesn't. You can gain followers from stuff that you know it's just a little trend or whatever, and your engagement won't be good, and you won't be worth mm -hmm. any money, and you you still have a million followers. So, um, yeah, it's just sure. it's a balance. Um, I think yeah, just building the fan base is most important. But yeah, I always in the back of my head, I'm trying to you know build that up as well. Nice. So yeah. between making all this content, are you, um, what, do, what do you listen to? Uh, I listen to a lot of rap. Um, a lot of like, I'm trying to think of my favorite guys right now. A lot of Russ, a lot of Drake, mm -hmm. um, a lot of Harlow. Uh, oh, Mike. Mike is one of my favorite guys. So nice. yeah, a, a lot of hip hop. And then, uh, I mean, I listen to a little bit of everything though. So I'm not like limited to anything. That's cool. But yeah, rap, rap is the main stuff I'm, I'm bumping. So nice. Um, well, yeah. let me do a quick lightning round before I, I let you get back to, uh, I'm sure, a busy day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, totally. What's your favorite city to travel to? Ooh, um, Chicago. Oh, nice. Been there a couple times. There. I just liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> other than Denver, because I'm from Denver. Denver's always number one, but other than my hometown. Denver, oh, is that right? Yeah, Denver's a great city. Yeah. Yeah, Denver's the best, man. I love Denver. Nice. Um, who's your favorite DJ? Ooh, uh, DJ Drama. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice. What's the last great book you read? Atomic Habits. By oh, Fly. yeah. Love that book. Uh, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I get his newsletter, and there's like always good stuff in there. Yeah. That book, that book is like life changing. So I'd recommend yeah. it to anybody that hears this. Yeah, it's crazy. What movie do you think you've seen the most in your life? Uh, that's tough. Probably like Elf. Honestly, <laughs> I watch it like five times every Christmas. It's probably Elf. Yeah, great. Yeah, movie. My wife, my wife is obsessed with that movie. I yeah. get it. Well, it's, it's coming great, up, man. man. Christmas season's coming up, so you, you yep, can start yep. binging it again. I got to throw it on tonight, honestly. That's awesome. Um, who's somebody you haven't met, but you've learned a lot from? Um, I would say Russ, honestly, because Russ is like obviously a great artist, but he's so much bigger than music. Like his sure. just advice and his hustle, I've learned a lot from. So I'd say Russ. Yeah, I actually just started reading his book uh, last week. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Great book. Yeah. What is it? It's, yeah. it's All in Your Head. I think yeah. Called, right? yeah. 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 Great book. Yeah. Nah, that's, that's a good call. Um, so if I worked for you, if I was, if I was on team Danny G, uh, what's yeah. something I would hear you say over and over? Uh, I'd say it's my, it's my new thing. It's a build and they will come. That's like all I say these days. So yeah. that's what I would say. Yeah. That's a great mantra, man. It's just, you know, keep grinding. 
exactly. Just trust yeah. the process. Yeah. Yep. That's dope. I love it, man. Well, uh, dude, we'll be watching for what's next. I'm excited to see where this journey takes you. And uh, I'm sure lots of good things to come. I appreciate you spending Thank some you, time with us. Yeah, I uh, appreciate you having me, man. This was awesome. Thank you, man. How um, how should everyone, where should everyone follow you online? Yeah, uh, Instagram is uh, Danny G Official One. TikTok is Danny G Entertainment. And then, uh, yeah, Spotify is uh, just Danny G. Nice. Right on, man. We'll, we'll definitely be following along. Appreciate it, man. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man. It's a fun, fun conversation. Yeah, this is great, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, that was Danny G on Rebel Radio. Uh, maybe his 10,001 piece of content for this year. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Leave us a comment. Hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, where, wherever you like. And most importantly, come back next week for more Rebel Radio. Peace.